using the electric sander, super tiring. And uh, I think I need, I think I need to work out. <laughs> Cause uh, my arm got pretty tired holding this thing. It does sand it really fast, but uh, I was just really tired from holding it. I'm gonna do something a little bit different and do a voiceover instead of all the background music and maybe you'll like the commentary. Um, so here we're removing the carpet and uh, the uh, the city of Oxnard was doing an event where they were hauling uh, like big items like carpets, like couches, tires, uh, like kind of like a spring cleaning event to prevent a whole bunch of, you know, big items in the street and so I decided to take that opportunity. Um, so as of the title of the video, we are skim coating the, the ceiling here. And uh, after I sanded, I was about to paint, you know, the, the ceiling, like just the bare ceiling. And uh, my dad was like, yeah, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> because if you do, then the joist, which is like the, the beam you see right here, that's uh kind of like parallel to the camera that's gonna show um under the paint or it's gonna flash under the paint and flashing is just like when you see like the underlying compound or um things show like like even through the paint and so to prevent that you got to do um a layer of compound or two layers of compound to hide that stuff so yeah you can really see the the joist here that's parallel to the camera and and that's why you got to skim coat it is to is to hide that stuff when you paint it um the the part that's perpendicular to the joist i think it's called the noggin i'm not 100 percent sure i did look look it up and try to find what the correct terminology is but if you know what the correct terminology is um, feel free to correct me in the comments. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I know the, I know the, um, I think the bigger ones are the joists or, or, or maybe the small ones are the joists. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so here I'm rolling, I'm rolling the, uh, joint compound onto the ceiling and then I'm, I'm smoothing it out, uh, with the, uh, joint compound knife. I think that knife was like, I don't know, like 14 inches, something like that. And I'm just doing like the rest of the perimeter here. That was my general strategy. Like, roll the major parts and then do the perimeter later. Um, apparently, someone called me here. It looks like I'm just like walking around, <laughs> talking to someone. Uh, but yeah, I'll have Chris help me out as well. Um, looks like he's smoothing things out. And uh, yeah, it's. It's really nice when you have two people, you know, helping you out. Um, here we're doing the the uh, upstairs hallway, and uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 it was a real pain trying to do this like over the the staircase. That was that was a pain since it was like since it was really hard to reach. Thanks to my dad for installing the uh, recessed lighting. It looks really good. There it is, right there. That's kind of hard to see. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, while we um, skim coat the, the ceiling, I'm gonna use these six Kelvin uh, garage lights down here to uh, light up the room. Would do it in the daytime, but I find that I have more time at night, so. I'm gonna do that night. So yeah, let's do it. I changed some of my sound settings, so hopefully it sounds a little bit better and not so like peaky or weird. I don't know. I tried to lower down the uh, the audio to make it not sound so so uh, so loud. But um, here I'm applying the first coat of the joint compound downstairs. And uh, it was really satisfying, like, ro rolling. I'm not going to lie. It was satisfying rolling it <laughs> and smoothing it, smoothing it out. It was just, it was just a lot of work. 
you can you can kind of see uh, Chris here. He's applying the tape. And oh, the so we ran out of the the frog tape. The frog tape is the green tape. We ran out of the frog tape like right at the fireplace, and so we had to use the uh, the Home Depot tape that my dad gave me, and that's the orange one. And I will say the Home Depot tape is is terrible <laughs> because it. I mean it it does the job, but when you when you remove it, it it leaves some of the residue in the in the corner of where you taped, and and so it it becomes a real pain to try to remove later because you need like a razor or something really sharp and something fine to. To remove those little, those little like strands of the uh, the orange tape, so I would not recommend that. I've been using the uh, the blue masking tape from uh, from Scotch, the the sharp line tape, and that's been working really well. I got a three pack from Lowe's for twenty five dollars, pretty expensive for tape, <laughs> but uh, it works really well. So would recommend that. If uh, if you need some painters tape, um, here I think I I assigned Jung the uh, the perimeter perimeter duty. Um, here you can get a better look of what I'm doing uh, versus the other clip. So general strategy here is you know apply the joint compound, smooth it out, and then rinse and repeat. You can kind of see in the middle section. I it looks like I didn't do that good of a job, but we're gonna do a second coat on this anyways. So um, the first coat doesn't have to be like amazing, you know. We just want to get the stuff onto the ceiling here, and then here I do the hallway. Um, pretty easy. I didn't since the hallway is like I think the hall I think this hallway is like seven feet high. Um, I don't know how tall that is in uh, in meters. So maybe I'll put the conversion down. Um, <laughs> uh, and then uh, here I'm doing the uh, the second coat. Again, just applying it with the roller, smoothing it out. And it looks like here I was by myself. So, you know, it took me all night. I've, I probably condensed like four or five hours of work down into... This is probably like a minute a video. So it's weird seeing myself w work like so fast. Like it it seems like I'm doing this super fast, but this took over like a few hours <laughs> of me uh, of my time and uh if I remember correctly, I was here pretty late. Um sometimes when I was working, I didn't leave until like I don't know, like 1 or 2 in the morning. So and I mean, the reason why I'm working this late is because I can't do it during the daytime because I have my regular job. <laughs> so I've been I've been telling people that hey, I'm I'm working at my my second job because this this basically is like a second full time job. Uh, here I'm just doing the perimeters because since I didn't have any help, um, I like rolling. Uh, so I did that first and then I was like, all right, I'll do the edges. So, um, so I'm doing that. Uh, what else can I say about this? Oh yeah. The, the light in the, uh, on the left side, it's a lot warmer than the light, the garage lights on the right side. The garage lights are like super like cool. They're probably like, I don't know, like thousand Kelvin something like that versus the light on the left I think the light on the left is like six or seven thousand Kelvin um that extra like 1k Kelvin does make a difference oh here I think I came back from I don't know like band practice or something I don't know I came back from something and Chris was uh skim coating it and he thought that I didn't do the second skim coat so he started to do the second skim coat but he was actually applying the third skim coat. He just didn't know that. So I told him, hey, just finish whatever is in your, uh, I don't know, the little metal container that holds the joint compound. Just finish whatever you're doing 
um, with the joists, you know, put the remainder compound on there. And then we're going to work on the room upstairs because uh, the, the right side of the downstairs, because of Chris, has like three layers of skim coat, which we didn't need. <laughs> um, and so I, I think I still needed to do the second skim coat on like the left side in the dining room area. Um, so that's what I'm doing over there. And, and Chris is putting some of the uh, remaining touches, you know, if he's finding any issues or any, uh, any valleys, then he's, he's putting that in. Um, I, I kind of wish I had a smaller pole cause I got, I got one of those six, six feet poles and, uh, it extends to 12 feet, but I didn't need the six feet. I, it probably would have been nice if that six feet was like three feet or maybe four feet instead. Cause sometimes I would have the pole like hit the wall and it's kind of annoying. So I kind of wish the pole was a little bit smaller. Let's see. It looks like we're over in the dining area. Um, skim coating. Yeah. And then I told Chris to like move all the materials upstairs. So that's what, that's what he's doing. Um, right here, we started doing the, uh, the second skim coat. It looks a lot better when you apply when I apply the second skim coat, and it's harder to see the joists, but I mean you could still kind of see it. Oh, and then for this room, we decided to use instead of the premix, we decided to use the uh, the easy the easy sand forty five minute, um, the one that's still uh, the one that's not mixed yet, just like the powder, and that was a mistake. <laughs> Because since we're not pros here, um, it, it takes forever. It takes us more than 45 minutes to skim coat a ceiling, even though there's two of us. So by the time it was like past 45 minutes, it was getting really hard to skim coat the ceiling because it was already starting to dry. So that was a real pain. And then the second thing is that I didn't mix the, uh, the Easy Sand 45 very well. So inside the bucket, I would get like a ton of chunks and these chunks will get on the wall. And uh, when I tried to skim coat the ceiling, there would be all these marks from the chunks. And uh, I don't know, it, it was just a really horrible time. And so we basically had to do um, like a 0.5 layer <laughs> to fix all of the valleys that were created by the chunks. And so that wasn't fun. That was a mistake. The, the, uh, oh yeah. The easy sand bag is like in the closet. I don't know if you can see it like in the middle of the closet. Um, yeah. Don't use the 45 minute, uh, one. If you're a noob, <laughs> just use the premix one. It's very, it's very, uh, forgiving. I would recommend using that one. The 45 minute one is great. If you're just doing like touch ups though. So touch ups are great with that. Or even use the the twenty one. I haven't done one of these uh, updates from my <laughs> DSLR for a while, but I uh, got the electric sander from Home Depot that I'm renting. There's the vacuum. Here's like the sanding, the drywall sanding pole thingy. So I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna smooth all of this out. Hopefully, I get most of it. If not, then I'll just uh, manually do it and uh, smooth it out then. All right. Um, so at Home Depot, I, I rented this um, electric sander and also came with uh, the vacuum included. Dude, this thing is really tiring to use. Because number one, I'm really weak. <laughs> I don't know. I'm skinny. Um... Two, you're you're using this thing and it's above your head, so like your blood circulation is not that great. You know, so 
you're fighting you're fighting the ceiling you're fighting gravity that's not great um but it does it does the job like super well like you can sand a whole room in probably minutes versus like manually sanding it um so it's it has like a high like result but it takes a lot more like strength to use versus like doing it manually it's like a low strength uh but takes a lot of time using the electric sander super tiring and uh i think i need i think i need to work out because <laughs> uh my arm got pretty tired holding this thing it does sand it really fast but uh i was just really tired from holding it um, I might actually just prefer to do it manually or to sand the, at least the ceiling manually because it'd be less tiring. I can have my, uh, my arms closer to, uh, to my body. So, yep, I think uh, lesson learned. This is great if you have upper body strength, um, but I think I'm going to stick with the, uh, the manual sanding. Okay, this last bit in the... Apparently people don't call it master bedroom anymore, or usually you don't call it master. They've been calling it like the owner suite or some other. Anyways, uh, for this room, this is really like the last time I'm going to be spending a significant amount of time in this room because I decided to uh, concentrate my efforts in the other rooms and uh, get and to try to get more stuff done because I think I was spreading myself a little too thin and uh, I think for the amount of time I spent uh, renovating, I haven't, I feel like I haven't done as much. And so I decided, all right, let's do the master layer. That's like its own project. Um, but I, I think with this video, I think we're gonna wrap this up. Um, skim coating uh, was fine, but I think the next step, that's, that's a step that I, I really enjoyed. So that's gonna be the next one.